can take a few. Yeah, if there are any questions about NAS, yeah. yeah. Is this voice different than your voices? That's a good question. That's a great, that's question. A great question. We may have two different answers. <laughs> <laughs> you, you go, and I'll see. Um, could you repeat the question? Her question was, uh, did the voice in the collaborative novel, was it different, uh, did you say, was it different from the, your each individual our, voice. our voices are yeah, in our other fiction? The answer is yes and no, <laughs> okay? I mean, the answer is um, there were verbal tics that each of us had, and when we agreed on a verbal tic, for example, I'll be more, I'll put in, what, you know, I, as opposed to having it's, we had the character say it is, okay, without not using. Um, oh, Jill might say it, like I T, it would, you know, it would yeah. be I T apostrophe D, and I have, I hate Hated that. The sound of it, 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 such an ugly sound. <laughs> yeah, like, no, it, it had, it did. It, and it was, abandoned, oh. abandoned, it did. No, right, so, and uh, I, yeah, no, no, I mean, it was, it, 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 it changed the tone of the voice, so that was, so when I gave the voice over to that, I could, I could hear it not being my writing voice, okay? Um, I tend to be a, probably a more visual writer, and so. Well, she started as an artist. I started as an artist, so, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I mean, it's not visual, I mean, I, 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 I rely on a visual way of telling a story. And so I may have pulled you more. I mean, we what we did is we tried to have our strengths, but it it, it is a, it's almost like a combined voice. Yeah, it is a kind of combined voice. Um, you know, different people who know us and our like writer friends will say, "Oh, I heard you in in there. And I heard you in there." But <laughs> it's not true. Who knows? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. I don't know what it, yeah, that was, but that's it was really interesting to see. To find a voice, and you know, people say, "Oh, well, how do you find your voice? How do you find your voice in writing?" You don't. You find a voice for each work, yeah. right? So it was about finding the voice for this collaborative novel, and it was, as I think I would agree, it was, it was different and the same. Um, well, I, well, once we had, once we agreed on the character, once we started to develop who this, the, it's a first-person novel, so it's very important the character is. I, her voice. Once we had that, it was no longer an Amy or a Jill voice. It was Morgan's voice. It was, mm -hmm. and we would you would immediately you wouldn't think about writing it in another way. You you you. She had her own way of seeing the world, and that's you know that's the best way in which to write when you, you give yourself over to whoever you're creating. How many people in here are? Novelists of whatever type of written novels, particularly long form. No, just written. Yeah, pretty many, pretty many. Okay. Yeah. I mean, does that sound right to you that it's about finding a voice, yeah. not yeah. Yeah. a voice? You know, the yeah. voice. Yeah. Also, what seems so interesting um, listening to you is there are components at play here that. I think made this possible to seeing the two of you interact too, mm -hmm. and it's the level of experience that you have is like, yeah. and then femininity seems to be. I don't know how many men. Mm. With That's your an level. interesting idea. I, I am actually. I don't know because the lack of the ego. Um, I don't know. It just anyway. There, it's kind of yeah. it's a beautiful thing to see. It's like. Uh, both of you coming together at just the thank right you. time when it just well, really and part. Of, thank you for that very lovely comment. And and in fact, you know, we, between us individually, we we figured. I mean, uh, yeah, between years. us, seventy years of <laughs> writing fiction, <laughs> and that seemed um, like a, a good reason to say, hey, let's do something different. <laughs> I'm kind of sad. Let's do something really different. Um, and what is it that we we like reading? You know, I'm gonna reach for. You know this. I might reach for the Highsmith. You know, reread something wonderful. Um, and it's about choosing to do something very different um, after a lot of time doing things. You know, differently. What's interesting for me now, because is I'm starting a, another novel, mm -hmm. uh, at my own novel, and you know, it's it's I can see how this experience changed me. 
Um, and I want it to have changed because I mean, I, I, I mean to, it'll, this will be my ninth book, so I, I, I desperately need freshness. And it was, it's a really interesting, after writing this book, I, I'm a changed writer. And, and that's kind of exciting and scary. In what, what ways do you see it? Can you quantify it? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing myself to talk about murder. And I'm finding myself um, just thinking about why so many people, I mean, usually when you tell people you're working on a novel, you know, you can see that a glass eye all over. <laughs> but when you say you're working on a thriller, everyone moves forward like this. <laughs> and you say, well, I mean, that's a really, I mean, part of the job of, of a writer, I at least believe, is to ar arrest the attention of people because there's so many other ways to entertain ourselves. So part of our, the onus of being a writer at this point in history is to write something that is going to grab people because otherwise they're not going to read it. So, you know, it, it allowed me to see if I could move in that direction, in a, in a direction I, I wouldn't call it, it, it just, it, it opened up a, a, a broader subject matter for me, not necessarily in terms of form, but certainly in terms of subject matter. Has it changed your work at all, Amy, do you think? Don't know yet. I haven't uh, done any. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of work, but I have. Uh, I know I, this is, it's fascinating for me to, to see what it's like for Jill to start back to her own works. And I haven't written anything since, um, since we did the book. Um, I'll let you know <laughs> at such time. Are you two going to collaborate again? You That's a question. We've been, we've been really talking about that. So we, we have... You know, we have um, we had a couple. Now we have really one idea that we figured is compelling enough um, that the whole notion of it, the, the bigger picture of it, the subject, you know, is is that matters enough to us to spend the kind of time it would take to do it again. That doesn't we don't, but we don't know. Uh, you know, I don't know. It could be a one off again. When I think of it as a one off, I come back to Kathy and the reason for doing this in the first place. And obviously, the book grew because we brought our own area, you know, areas of expertise and interest and confidence to the book, and it became something other than what Kathy would have done, of course, if she had had the time to do it. Um, so, as I said before, with, without that in place, it's it, it does change it. Yeah. Or certainly for me, you know, mm -hmm. I consider well, okay, well, what would what would it be? It would have, but we, 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 we have an idea that we think would give us a larger reason for doing it than just to, to, to do it again because we did it once. But I think time. entertainment, you know, to entertain is, is a big enough reason. Oh, absolutely. And, and it's hard to do that. It's hard to do it. So I'll let you know. It's really hard. Um, so I don't mean to say, oh, entertainment isn't enough. You know, you need a bigger, you know. Yeah. It's just... <laughs> It's just that it is hard work, although it was easier than working alone. It, it was hard, and um, I need a little something back of it to to carry it through. Um, Any more questions here? Because I have oh, good. Please. Hi. Yes. Hi. Um, so I first just have to quickly tell you, I am a master's student at Frank's forensic psychology at John Jay. Oh. I live in the exact part of Williamsburg. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Is your name Morgan? <laughs> uh, I was a competitive swimmer, and that's like my de-stress. Oh, okay. Like, <laughs> so reading this was like a very interesting experience for me. Um, but I just wanted to ask you, I mean, a part of it was like some of the surface stuff, a lot of the surface stuff was very familiar to me, oh. so I, I never so. felt quite so reflected. And I read a lot of thrillers mm -hmm. from my okay. because I love it. But um, I just would love to hear a little bit about how you developed the character, what, how many of those choices were deliberate, and how much, it, how much of it just sort of came about because these were certain things that you were familiar with, or how much of it came from Kathy. Because it feels very different from the, any protagonist I've, I've read in crime literature. I feel like it's in a great way. You know, it's like I don't, I don't feel like I've seen somebody who was so close to like my generation, my cultural mm -hmm. background, 
mm -hmm. here and that I'm surrounded with him and, and stuff. Mm -hmm. that, that that's really, so it was a really interesting, that's never happened for me reading them. It's always been like that's something so very cool to hear. Oh my it's God. really <laughs> cool to hear because, I mean, <laughs> the character has nothing to do with Kathy. Kathy was a 55-year-old a, a woman. The, the character came out of the idea of us wanting to write a, a younger woman. We chose that. We chose her age from the get go. We wanted because we, you know, that that it, it's being thirty added a whole element that was really fun to do. And and we had been thirty. And we. Had been 30. <laughs> <laughs> um, Kathy um, never. Study forensics. I mean, the, the core of Kathy's experience, that particular kind of betrayal, it is at the core of the novel. That that is what we took, um, and really, almost everything else was something we brought from outside of Kathy's experience. Um, but it is it's a it's a such a huge experience. Like she went through what so many people have gone through. Um, that I think I felt anyway that. Um, it was still very much Kathy's book. But, but also, I, I, for me, you know, being 30 and, and, and being in Williamsburg, because, you know, Williamsburg, I mean, when, when I was 30, I was in the East Village, okay? And, and that was a whole other milieu. But it's been really fun. I live in Williamsburg. It's really fun to, you know, see each generation come forward and find their own uniqueness. And it was really fun to have a character do that. And, you know, Williamsburg is a really kind it's of, fun. it's a fun, I moved there, I moved there. Jill just said, I moved here, I moved to Williamsburg. <laughs> and I did, I don't know for about a year. But you know, if you, if you yeah, know, I love it's, it. it's, I it's love great. It. That particular, like that little particular area yeah. to, uh, where do you live? I live on Jackson. Oh. Oh. I live on Manhattan. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh. We're going to be best friends. <laughs> question in the back. Oh, yes. Um, this, actually, this question is actually for Amy. Oh. I know that you have mostly written short fiction. Oh. Oh, I'm yeah. curious as to what your approach to writing a novel was. What kind of difficulties you ran into versus your short fiction in a novel? Because I'm also a short fiction writer. Oh, okay. And I've yet to make the transition. So do you want to make? Do you want to write a novel? Not necessarily. Yeah, oh, I didn't eat there for Tommy. But I mean, I know in this day and age, novels sell more, obviously. Oh, no, don't, not necessarily no, not. true. It's a, it's, that's the biggest fallacy. Yeah, don't, and don't ever write for the marketplace. Yeah. You no, know, no, you write what you, you want to write. But, but I guess what was your basic approach? Ask Jill. <laughs> <laughs> And you know, plot, even writing a, sh a short story or a novel for me, I mean, this is a very different for me because what happens in a story, the thing, what happens, isn't the most, in usually, isn't the most interesting part of any story. It's who's in the in it, that situation, and what they're making of it, you know? Mm -hmm. So suddenly, you know, we move into this, this kind of, this kind of a novel where what happens is hugely important. And, and, and affects everything else, and so that was it. Was very different for me. Not just so the not just the overview and structure and how do you handle so much time and the more everything character and time, but it, it was it was the, the way that what happens is foregrounded in a way that in my own short fictions it's it seldom is. So it was vastly different. It was probably more different experience for me than it was for Jill. Is that fair? No, because I, I, I mean, what was so well, weird? Yeah, I know. What was so weird to me was to have it. It was. I mean, what? I mean, really, if, you, if we were to cleave it into two, I mean, where I felt most comfortable. I mean, I you know, I again, I teach fiction, and, and one, you know, everyone, again, literary fiction always. Poo poo's plot, you know. It's, yeah. And the truth of the matter is, for me, plot is the most beautiful thing. If you can create a plot that's as beautiful as a singular sentence, that's my inspiration. That's always been my inspiration for books. But what wow. was, yeah, I, I find plot <laughs> for me, I find, I mean, I don't, plot for me is the form that a novel takes to move characters through life. I mean, it's, mm. 
And, and how you shape it to me is as beautiful as how you shape a sentence. It doesn't, plot doesn't mean lots of things happen. Plot means that things happen for a reason. And for me, that's a really interesting way of writing, okay? And yet, I understand, I mean, that does make sense to me. And yet, I am the collaborator here, and I'm somebody who doesn't trust causality. So that's in fiction. So that's it. Uh, uh, that was really something I had to face. You know, I, I'm very wary of saying, uh, oh, this person behaved this way because of being treated this way back then. You know what I mean? That, but that's not what, that's not what, what I ever think oh, of as okay. plot. What I think of as plot is, plot is something, ha you know, something happens that causes the next thing to happen, that causes the next thing to happen in no logical order. Mm -hmm. It's not that people have, I don't believe in, the, the idea of motivation is, is insane to me, okay? <laughs> I, nobody knows how they, why they're motivated, okay? People just do things, but when you do something, if you go up and I went up, right now I slap Danny's face, okay? <laughs> that would change our relationship for the rest of the time. <laughs> <laughs> and that, how that slap would change our relationship over a period of time is what would really interest me. Wasn't your TV series called yeah, The Slap? slap. Yeah. 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 But anybody else, Any, anything? Mm -hmm. Yes, hi. I keep thinking of Henry James, and I, mean, I haven't read your book, but how the way Henry James, in all of his books, somebody is is plotting to do something terrible to somebody, <laughs> and you know, there's as much suspense. If you can read fast, yes, you know, <laughs> <laughs> you'll be up all night for months. I love that. Well, thank you. Yeah. Yes, hi. Oh, can you about your plot? Can you say how much did you know when you started versus? Did you plan it out, or did you feel like you had to not know to, to stay interested in it? Like, I, I missed the very first thing you said. How did you figure out like the plot at what oh, stage? Well, did you know it at the beginning, before you started, or did you keep some of it? We ended up, we knew, we knew a fair amount, as I recall. We knew a fair and then we and cut not. out a lot. And then in the revision, we brought in a completely uh, new um, element after um, we went back and reread parts uh, most of um, uh, Les Liaisons and, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and talk about reading something or in this case rereading something at the right time you know that that was an example of that and then that that inspired another turn uh, in the book that we had not in, uh, had any uh, really any idea at the start, but, but it made sense. It made total sense to it. But you know, usually what we, I mean, usually, I mean, I, I maybe I'm speaking from my own novels, but even in this, usually I, I I know about fifty pages I can keep in my head, and beyond that I really can't. But I, I can think in about fifty page increments in terms of trying to in in the first in fifty pages. You know, you 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 move the story this far, and that's all you really need to know. And then when you get there, you can figure out the next. I mean, I, I don't. I mean, I don't. I think it's. A, I, first of all, if you create a plot beforehand, you're not really writing. You know, it's not a discovery process, and it, there's not. Gonna, if you can't, if you don't get surprised while you're writing, you're not going to surprise the reader. So, I, I don't think. I think overplotting is a real. It's a crime. <laughs> I would like to. I would like to ask people if they would, if they uh, could just call out um, a writer of um, psychological suspense or thrillers that, that you're really keen on. I we somebody um, recommended to both of us Patrick May, who has a trilogy, as uh, somebody we should know about. That you, I'm sure you do. Um, anybody you really like that you, you would point us to. Some Ruth Rendell. Well, sure. Oh, yeah, Ruth yeah, Rendell, yeah, should, yeah, I should have mentioned yeah, her back yeah, in the beginning. Yeah. Ruth Rendell, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. A, okay. She has a question. Yeah. Uh, no, I was going to say a mystery. I'm not sure what distinction you made between uh -huh. thriller and mystery. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't think there is a distinction. Well, actually, I, and I was going to say one last question, mm -hmm. but, but one of the distinctions often made between mysteries and thrillers is that you do reveal things at the beginning, is a thriller. 
it's not a whodunit, it's the why done it's it. The it's why. Yeah. Thrillers. So okay. thrillers are closer to what we might say are more literary novels. Yes. Well, that's you know? yeah. 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 And yeah, they're, they're big, considered bigger, mm -hmm. that's all. So. Oh, let me mention another wonderful book that, that was important to me during this, and it's a book that Jill had first told me about many years ago. Um, um, Cold Shoulder by Linda with a Y, Linda LaPlante, yeah. who's better known for the um, uh, Prime, Prime, Suspect. Prime yeah. Suspect, the wonderful yeah. series with Helen Mirren. But Cold Shoulder is a big, fat, um, uh, it's psychological suspense. So, uh, it's so beautifully done. Oh, I read it twice, and it's like this thick. It's, it's a character driven. It's a character driven thriller. Really you know, it's so good. And that, I mean, that's in the end. I, whatever you genre you want to call it, it's it's about it's about it's about trying to figure out, you know, characters. I mean, that's in the end. I think that's I, maybe. A I think yes. So now, <laughs> now uh, we're gonna we'll follow uh, Amy and Jill to back to get books, and um, I just um, I was trying to imagine also not only these two wonderful writers in the same room creating the book, but I, I love the idea because I've seen that happen on the screen. When someone takes control of your screen, you know, that with that and it gets written, and I'm trying to get somebody to do that for my next book. Can you do it? Yeah. Right, so please, thank you so much.